Hey, everyone, and welcome to my little music corner of the world. John Clauser here, and tonight, this is a special night because I've got an esteemed panel on my channel for the very first time actually doing this. I'm looking forward to this. So to my, let's see, I'm looking at it from on my screen. So to my right, I've got Ryan Gavalier from Ryan's Vinyl Destinations. To my left on my screen here, I've got Todd Evans, who's collaborates with many different channels rush fans contrarians uh and these other two that i'm about to list off here grant arthur from grant's rock warehouse and then peter kerr from rock daydream nation all the way from australia gentlemen how y'all doing tonight great how are you doing? good thanks great. thanks for having me Stuff. thank you for being on this uh given my history of chatting with you guys i feel like you guys would have a good grasp on this album that we're going to talk about tonight so um this uh we're going to talk about a band called love coma and they are out of san antonio texas they actually formed in the early 90s uh they had two albums uh one was called soul rash and uh, came out in 1993 and then their follow-up uh was called language of fools that came out in 1996 uh unfortunately their record label was small and folded and the band decided to go their separate ways uh leader of the band chris taylor uh main lyricist and uh singer guitar player and other instruments uh you have chris dodds on drums jeff duncan was on the first album and second album on bass uh matt slocum uh would be on the first album on guitar and cello um after the band uh, after that first album matt would leave the band took yeah, started up another little band for out of texas maybe you may have heard of them guys i call sixpence none the richer yeah don't know if anybody's heard of them but i'm sure you've heard kiss me and a couple of other songs on their malls stations um anyway chris mattingly would take over on guitar and would be on language of fools uh and he is with the current lineup right now along with mitchell connell who would play with uh, chris taylor on some of his solo albums uh, Justin uh, Schneider is on bass currently, and of course, Chris Dodds on drums and Chris Taylor fronting the band. So this album that we're going to talk about, this came out in October of 2020. Uh, I learned about it uh, through um, Instagram and social media, and they were doing like an Indiegogo Kickstarter kind of thing. To it Basically, it was a crowd, crowd um, funding kind of thing. Um, I first learned of the band in 1998, uh, and there was a song from this album, The Soul. This is called Soul Rash. This was the debut. There was a song called Heart Wide Open, and that was where I, I saw a music video for them. And I just really dug the song. I loved the jangly guitar. There was a great groove, and I just loved some of the uh, the lyrics and the content surrounding it and the and the music. Chris Taylor's got a lot of material out there. Um, and uh, as far as his solo career, a lot of digital stuff mostly, but very worth checking into. I've been trying to go down the rabbit hole and it's just taken me a while. So I'm going to shut up. And I want to let these guys talk about this album and see what they thought, because I was curious to hear what they thought of this album. So, yeah. Ryan, I know you got a jet out of here soon, so I'm going to give the floor to you, my friend. Awesome. What Thank you, John. I'm glad to be on your channel. Um, it's been a long time coming and I'm, I'm excited to be finally doing it thanks Ryan. And so yeah this album love coma i i dig it honestly i think that it reminds me a little bit of the cult reminds me a little bit of like pearl jam at times and some other bands of that era I, like of like the 90s and stuff but it does a bit of a modern feel to it as well um, I think the musicianship is really excellent on this, especially the bass playing. I think there's some awesome bass lines throughout, really complex ones too, which was impressive to me. Um, I should mention, by the way, uh, JJ Placencio is the bass player on this on this album for most of those songs. I forgot to mention that. Sorry. Oh, nice. Yeah, he he did a fantastic job. I think there's a lot of really good. <clears throat> grooves on this album and the production overall is fantastic the guitar sound is really good the bass sound is really good and the vocals too um the vocals are what really reminded me of the cult he has a really good 
like mid range voice, um, really charismatic to hear, it sets a good atmosphere. And honestly, the whole band creates a really good atmosphere, especially in a song like Two of a Million, which was probably my favorite one on here. I thought that was a really catchy and well written song. And I think song wise, it was pretty consistent for me. I think there was definitely some songs that stood out to me more than other ones. Um, I wouldn't say everything was like a classic for me, but everything was pretty good. Uh, some of my favorites were like the opener, Into Me, You See, uh, Two of a Million. Uh, actually, the first three tracks, because Falling Over You was excellent. And then after that, the one that really stood up to me was Under My Shadow, which is one of the last tracks on the album. I thought that was a fantastic one. Those ones rocked quite a bit, um, had a really good atmosphere. Like I said, the album does go into some different type of feels to it, like How Long. That was a bit more of like a cleaner sounding kind of almost like folk indie type of feeling song, which I liked a lot. Um, Burn the Night Away was a really good closing track. I thought this album overall was just really, really good. And um, I think that especially as a modern release, because like I hear a lot of modern stuff that I really like, but it doesn't usually just grab me instantly. And this one did like first five minutes of the album. I'm like, damn, this is really good stuff. Like I, I dig it. And um, I think it's a super cool album cover too. I can't really do it just this year, but um, John had it up already. And another thing I liked about this album too, is it's only 40 minutes long. It's not like an overly long album, like a lot of modern releases, like that are going up into an hour and stuff. I feel like most albums don't need to be that long to be completely honest. I think like 40 minutes, 45 minutes is usually like the peak album time. So it was cool to see that they had the self-awareness to do that. Um, but yeah, I just think that overall, like, especially for a band that had been act inactive for so long, they have a really good chemistry playing together. Um, it's really well produced, very professional sounding, um, has kind of a vintage feel to it, but also a modernity. I think it, sounds a lot like a like an early 90s type of album um which i dug a lot because that's one of my favorite eras of music is like that early 90s um yeah if i had to give it a rating i would say probably like a 7.5 out of 10 it's not like it's not rising up to like my favorite albums of all time but i was very impressed with it and for a modern release i think it's really solid stuff that everybody should go check out good cool very cool yeah. thank you ryan thank you thank you all right let's see who do we want to go let's go uh let's go let's go todd let's go uh let's get your thoughts on this one okay well when i when i first uh was uh was was starting to listen to this record i really didn't know what to expect um based on the art for some reason i think it was just the color it was reminding me of this even though this is a face and that's just a, the Love Coma album is just an abstract, the, the colors of it. And then it made me wonder if it was gonna be a goth album. And so I wasn't sure because like you couldn't really tell on the, uh, from just looking at the art. So, uh, and one of the things that I thought that was interesting when I started to uh, research it was that on the Wikipedia page for this band, which is pretty sparse, uh, they classify them as a Christian rock band. And, um, and then I thought, oh, okay, well, maybe, maybe that's just, I'm not really hearing that. So maybe that's just wrong, you know, cause Wikipedia. And then I went and looked into Matt Slocum and I, and I, and I, and I'd researched Sixpence None the Richer and they're considered to be a Christian alternative band. And they won a couple of Dove awards and I didn't even know that. But, uh, in, and that reminded me of another band. <laughs> There's a band out of Virginia Beach who are now out of Nashville called May. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of them. I've heard of them. But, but they also, they were on Tooth and Nail Records, which I guess was kind of a Christian label. Mm -hmm. And they're very similar. They don't, uh, this is their big album, The Everglow. Their music does not seem particularly to be Christian themed. So uh, I, I know that that must come from somewhere. I think that their record label was a Christian record label, and that might be part of where that comes from. 
but um but anyway i thought that was really interesting but uh when I started listening to it, I wasn't really sure uh, what 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 style it was, was supposed to be. I was a little bit confused at first, and I noticed that some critics had compared it to the Mission UK, and I thought, you know what, it kind of has that kind of a feel to the way the vocals are. And then the more I listened to it, I thought that it reminded me of the cult, like Ryan said. It's he sounds a little bit like uh, Ian Asbury at times. And um, he sound, and, and I thought, also thought of this other band, the Bolshoi. I don't know if anybody's ever heard them. Fantastic mm-hmm. band. And they uh, have a, 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 they're slightly goth, but also sort of mainstream. And they like, like, like mainstream rock slash alternative. And they have a really good vocalist named Trevor Tanner, who's incredibly uh, charismatic. And this guy reminds me of him. I don't know if he's as good as Trevor Tanner, but he really reminds me of him a lot. Um, one of the reviews that I read of this album said that the that the uh, that uh, Chris Taylor has vocal swagger, and I thought that that was a really good way to to uh, describe it because I sort of heard that I sort of heard that too. Um, very in, very uh, inventive guitar playing on this album, and through a couple of different styles, I'm still trying to pick out you know what some of the things remind me of but uh i hear a little bit in a little bit of the more jangly uh guitar playing i hear a little bit of rem not that the band sounds like rem but i hear kind of a peter buck style to some of it um like ryan said bass playing is really really good um and uh i noticed that there are strings on some of the tracks which really appealed to me and that's what got me that's what helped me start to really get uh more familiar with it was that I was noticing that there were strings on some of the tracks. There are two atmospheric ex- ex- instrumentals, which I thought, think are really good. Uh, one of them, Heart Wide Open Redo, is r- really keyboardy, and that always appeals to me. And um, the other one is called uh, Cello Drone, and uh, I think both of those are really, really good. Um, as far as like my favorite tracks, um, I also like uh, like Ryan, I like Falling Over You. I like What Love Looks Like. I think that that pr- sounds like it would have kind of a sing-along chorus to it, like if you saw them live. Um, and I like the Boomerang and I like Under My Shadow and uh, Burn the Night Away, the, the, the uh, closer with the strings, I think is really fantastic. So uh, I really like the album a lot and it really grew on me probably about halfway through the third listen. I started to figure out, you know, what what they were trying to do, and uh, my my initial impression of the band was that, and of the album was that, okay, the songs are really good, the playing's really good, it's very melodic, but I don't know about the singer. I don't know if he's really distinctive enough. And then the more I listened to it, the more I learned what he sounds like, and the the more I appreciated him. So uh, so I sort of started out thinking I put it in my. Uh, Apple Music library. And I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll just put it in my library while I'm listening to it to prepare for the show. And then a couple of listens through, I was like, oh, you know what? I might keep it in my library, but I don't know if I'll order the vinyl or anything like that. And then a couple more listens, I was like, maybe I'll order the vinyl. <laughs> so, <laughs> that might so be a, was, that might be a little tough. I liked at first, but I thought, you know, and when I first heard it, I thought, oh, I could talk about this, sure. But then the more the more listens I did, the more I thought, you know, this is something that I think I'm going to, you know, listen to for pleasure. And uh, so I really like the album. If I was to rank it, if I was to rate it out of five stars, I'd probably say three and a half. And out of 10, I'd probably say seven and a half. Um, I think it's really solid. And I'm interested in listening to the earlier uh, albums. And, and I felt like I feel like even though they're an early 90s band, that they don't sound dated to me. I, I, I didn't think that at all. Yeah. So. Um, as far as, as far as ordering the vinyl, I think that was only, they was only that did, only? A, I think that was only with the Indiegogo Kickstarter okay. stuff. I don't think he did a, uh, like a big giant run of it. Um, you it's know, because band so, camp. so yeah, yeah. The, the, you could certainly scares. get it off band camp. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the thing, um, the thing I noticed too, I don't know if you can, you can't, I'm going to see if you can see it. It's it was numbered. Oh, it's numbered. Oh, nice. nice. So number eleven. Yeah. So I got number number eleven. But look uh, at wow. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So go figure. Um, the one thing I want to touch on, Todd, about the the Christian aspect. 
yes, they got lumped into that Christian genre because I think the labels they were on were Christian labels. Um, but there's really nothing much on those albums that really speak like you would think off of a Christian record. Right, yes, there's right. a spiritual element, but yeah. that's not his, that wasn't what he was hoping to portray. You know, he, well, that's, that, that's why I immediately thought about that other band may, because I get the same impression about mm -hmm. that. And when asked about it, they always say, you know, we don't mind being called that, but it's not really what we are. Right. We don't, we don't, we don't have a problem with that. So are you familiar with a band called the 77s? Yes, but I don't know very much about them. Okay. So Mike Rowe, who was this, I think he was a singer or he was a member of that band. He produced the language of fools album. So, uh, so he had a role in, and I know he was a really big, um, that was a really big influence on Chris Taylor. So, um, but yeah, that's some great stuff. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, Todd. That's a, Sure. That's some good points. I love, love hearing that kind of stuff, man. Um, Peter, let's give you, let's give your internet a shot. See if, see if uh, we can get you through here. <laughs> hey, last night his internet was just working perfectly. Yes, it was. It was. Oh, could you imagine if that happened, Grant, yesterday? How, oh, 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 I, oh no. Uh, for, for those, for those who are watching, Oh. Grant and Grant and Peter got to interview Prescott Niles from the Knack, a uh, bass player from the Knack. And that was a great, great interview from what I've been able to watch of it. Congrats on doing that, by the way, guys. Really, hats off to you guys. That was awesome. It was, yeah, no, thanks for that. And, and it was um, funny. The thing about that, though, is that we were only supposed to have Prescott for like 15, 20 minutes. He went for two hours. Wow. And he probably would have went longer. He likes to talk. Would have gone for three. <laughs> well, he seemed yeah. to like talking to us. He yeah. Said, wow, you guys are famous. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know, Grant. I don't think anyone's gone to the two hours yet on my side of the fence. I haven't. I'm not sure on your well, side of the fence, but uh, a lot not. of people are coming in I and mean, out. I'm, so, I'm yeah. a big fanboy of the knack anyway. So, mm. I mean, I got everything. I could have kept pulling. Hell, hell, I've got the Josie Cotton album that the Prescott plays bass on. I pulled that out for crying out loud. He was prepared. I was prepared. He, um, he, uh, he, he loved that. He did. That you pulled that one out. Yeah, it was great. No, it was good. I think he actually appreciated yeah. us because he but could anyway, tell that we thank actually Thank you um, for inviting it. me. Yeah. Thank you for having me on your music channel, John. And Thank you, um, it was it was really yeah, it was nice to to listen to this. Um, well, firstly, in listening to this record, or not record, but this this album, I noticed the tonality of his voice. And like everyone else, um, Ian Asprey came to my mind. He has that vibrato, especially when he he raises up into the upper range. He has that sort of like little vibrato. And I thought, oh, wow, you could hear the um, definitely there's a sort of a, a lineage to the cult. So that's sort of prevalent. Um, a lot of uh oh, <laughs> he had that similar look the last time. Yeah. Oh, there he's back. So I'm back. Did you hear anything I said? <laughs> <laughs> I I heard the uh, the tonality and then that, that then you froze back again. So yeah, <coughs> a lot of layered a lot of layered guitar sounds, which was quite interesting. Um, I think the, the the songs I really like were two of a million stars. Um, Burn the night away that's that's really interesting as well um and into me you see i like todd looked at you know the the bio and saw it was christian rock but it's not overt it's not they're not like petra nope or any of those bands where it's like really overtly christian um the only thing this uh, this album sort of sell Uh oh. Hmm. Maybe we better.
Maybe we better get back to Peter's. <laughs> let's. I can go. Yeah, Peter, if you get back on, let's let <clears throat> let me let's let Grant go and let's see if we can get your uh, see if we can get you back uh, back on Frozen here. Yeah, he was like Peter was saying. He brought up that Christian aspect, and I, I'll tell you, I've been listening to this record for, I don't know, a good three days, and each and the thing that I've really noticed about this record is there are so many different influences, I think, but I don't know. The band says that they were influenced by the water boys in the 77s. Critics say, say that it's the simple minds in mission UK. That might be true, but I hear a lot of Pearl jam. I hear a lot of the cure and I hear the cult and like, you know, Peter and everyone has said, Ian Asbury is a vocalist. It's very similar, but it seems like these guys have been influenced by a lot of things. Uh, like you said, it came out October of 2020, but it seems like it could have fit really well within the 1990s. And when I first listened to it, I didn't realize well, I think, John, you might have said it came out in 2020, maybe, but it didn't pop into my head. And I swear it was a 90s record. Hmm. And I'm not, there's nothing wrong with that. I thought the production Same. was, I thought the production was very uh, crisp. I thought the production was very good. I, from what I understand, I think um, all this was recorded at home in his studio. Pretty much. Yeah. Wow. Well, the and what was the gentleman's name again? Who's the uh, oh, Chris Taylor? Chris uh, Taylor. Mm -hmm. But as you look on Bandcamp and stuff, he's put out a lot of records. Um, if he engineered this, it's a wonderful listen. It is particularly great with headphones because I would walk the dog and listen to it. And it was funny because it has so many different influences. Like I said, you hear slap bass you hear funk the bass player is phenomenal one song he'll be playing funk the next song he'll just be doing like a soul run of some sort um amazing and the guitars on this are all over the place it seems like it's been in there's a lot of spaghetti western type of influence to some degree where the guitars it sounds like a telecaster playing through a fender amp and it just has that twang i mean to listen to this with headphones it's just a joy to listen to i i'm with ryan on this i think into you into you me bleh, say that real fast In, into me you see. you see say that really <laughs> fast uh two of a million falling over you the instrumental heart wide open is phenomenal and the strings on this record when the strings first kick in, I wasn't expecting anything like that. And it kind of takes you off into a, I, I don't want to say it's like a 1960s vibe, but I'm going to use that. It's almost a 1960s kind of string vibe. And it was very refreshing to hear that. Mm -hmm. Because there would be musical interludes where it was just strings. It's like Moody Blues. It's like the first, you know, the second Moody Blues record right um and it just goes back i think they had a wide range of influences now i did not go back and listen to any of the previous records so i i'm gonna have to go back and look at those because i it'll be interesting to see the progression from that amount of time but i kind of look at this record that it stands up more as a, a as a work in its entirety and as opposed to breaking it up because most of the songs segue into each other i love this record and i'm just so tickled that and i immediately got it as soon as i heard it Good. and it, and it, as each each listen i i like it more in fact i liked it so much i went ahead and band i went to band camp and bought it cool very because cool. Because I was so impressed. Hey, hold on. I wouldn't give it five stars, but I would give it a solid four stars. And what really is a crime 
is that if you look on the internet for this, you you find very few reviews. There's nothing on Winnipeg. Winnip- Boo, I can't say it. <laughs> Wikipedia. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and if you go on allmusic.com to do some research, they don't even list this record. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They list the first two. Yeah. And, it would... and it's a crime that this album isn't. Yeah. It it just flew well, so so low under the radar. It just, you know, they just, you know, he didn't, it just very quiet and just yeah. But but it's a great record. I was listening to it like at night. Mm-hmm. It's a wonderful late night record. I don't know, John. I love it. Four out of five stars easy. So I guess it'd be a seven out of ten. Okay. On all right. But cool. yeah, I love it. I yeah. What I love about these shows is we can get turned on to different things we've never heard of Mm -hmm. and we can discuss it. I love this. I really do like this record. Enjoyed it very much. And, and, and you're right. So listen to this album with headphones. Unbelievable. Cause even I, even I did that once and I just thought, Oh my gosh, this sounds amazing with a head with headphones on. Whoa. You've got to, you've got to give it a couple of of listens. There's a lot of separations because the guitars are like on the left side mm-hmm. and the guitars. I don't know how he recorded the guitars, but they're so well recorded and they sound so crisp mm-hmm. and the clean sounds are very clean. I'm just, it's just, I just was tickled when I first listened to it because it just takes all these different genres mm-hmm. and different influences and mixes it up in a bowl and, you know, and one it's of the just, things I think is so impressive about that is that it doesn't, you don't get the impression of like, oh, these guys are all over the place. They don't even know what they want to do. You don't get that impression at all. It it's all very, works. It's very coherent and yeah. it very, you, you, you uh, buy all of it. Like, oh, now they're doing this. Great. It doesn't sound like, what are they but doing it, now? But it all flows really well. All yeah. the segues, it was well thought out. The sequencing's perfect. I I'm glad I got to hear it. I don't cool. know. I just kind of tickled, taken by it. Definitely, it's definitely a headphone type of oh, um, yeah album, isn't it? Oh yeah. Because I don't know. Because I've had internet problems. I, I, I said something um, when I first heard the album. I didn't think it had much cut through, but when you put on the headphones, the second and third listen, then the penny starts to drop. So it's not an album that has immediate cut through. Um, you kind of think, oh, some of it's a bit generic, but you actually put on the headphones and then you can hear the separation, the layered guitars, the production. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think it's a great album. I wouldn't be as enthusiastic as, as Grant. I think it's good. It's solid. Um, but it does take a couple of listens. And, and um, certainly the thing that grabs you is, the vocals he's a very charismatic vocalist um and that tonality is is fantastic Mm -hmm. and you know lyrically as i said i don't know if you caught that bit it's not overtly christian it's not like petra it's it's more of just Mm -hmm. songs of the heart it's about relationships right which is what he was aiming more toward with this album not so much i mean never not that any of the other stuff is really uh, overtly christian or or and that certainly wasn't my impression to pass off a Christian rock record to you guys. I just thought this was just a solid rock and roll album. So, yeah. I mean, I didn't even know it was a bit of, bit of edge guitar. Wasn't there a bit of edge guitar? Did you hear a little I bit did. of yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of um, you two ding a ding a ding a, you know, that mm-hmm. sort of uh, the, the so long song, I think is where you, I think you hear the U2 influence. I think. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't mention you two, but I totally can hear it. Totally can hear it. One of the glory, the glory is. Yeah. One of the first things I thought of that when I was trying to describe what it sounded like, and I have it in my notes and I I glossed over it, but, and I can't really figure out why I had this impression, but I hear a little bit of Americana in it. And and I, I, Uh... I can't really tell you why, but it just, I get a little bit of a flavor of Americana at times. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I will say uh, Chris is um, in, if in researching through some of his solo material, um, 
uh, he is a um, a Bob Dylan. There's a lot of Bob Dylan influence with him, uh, and I think he certainly he certainly likes Bob Dylan. I think he's covered a couple of his songs um, on the on the material. So uh, hopefully, now that Peter's back, I'm going to try and let him finish finish while we can here. Maybe I don't know if that's him frozen oh, or look, yeah. Look as as I. <laughs> As soon as he starts talking, he freezes up. <laughs> Takes up more bandwidth. <laughs> oh, poor Peter. <laughs> Sorry, those man. Darn kids. Kick those kids off the internet. <laughs> but there's there's a point that I when when Peter gets to finish, I want I want to I wanted to I wanted to throw up a, a possible see if you heard it this way uh mm -hmm. on one of the songs. But uh go ahead, Peter, if you can try to. Yeah, look, I, I think it's a solid album. I'd give it like a six out of ten. Uh, okay. I like the the guitar sound. Um, I like the production. Um, I um, and I think, as Todd was saying earlier, you know, like the mission. I didn't hear simple simple minds maybe maybe not um but a lot of it it's very i actually one of the songs um to me sounded very much like stone temple pilots i don't know if you guys think some of the uh, sonically the yeah i heard pearl jams what i heard but you know stone temple pilots pearl jam uh, yeah but i, I think it solid I, I look i'll give it a six i don't think it's a great album but it's something that i could listen to and maybe you know even grow more to love mm -hmm. okay i think the more you listen to it the more it takes hold of you mm -hmm. you've got to sit with it for a little while you know but there's a lot of great rewards once you yep. totally grasp it yep. i think so so i'm going to pose this one to you guys so the song, What Love Looks Like. Mm -hmm. So here's a thought that I had with that song. Imagine Bob Dylan singing with the Beatles for Hey Jude. It's the Wait. most soulful song in the album, I think. Mm -hmm. and it's for me, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Peter. The choral. It's very... It's very soulful, that song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It yeah. was the one song on the album that I couldn't quite put my finger on what they were trying to do. I was like, okay, now this one doesn't sound like anything I've ever heard before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it kind of sticks out the from unique. the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I liked it, though. So yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know. But it was quite different from the rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that, I just wanted to see if you guys maybe, maybe thought of that or something I, that was just me but, i didn't uh, that i did not pop in my head but i can i could kind of see that yeah so there you go well um that's great i i, I really didn't know what you guys were going to think of these uh, of this record um so this really really makes me happy because i i just you know this yeah this this wasn't a you know and chris doesn't really have a big He's not a well-known singer out there. Yeah, he's got a lot of material, but he's basically a, a local guy in Texas. So he doesn't really have the, the national fame. But sometimes you, these little nuggets like this is just really, man, I, for me, I just latched onto it and I just really enjoyed it. So um, this, is the, uh, this is the CD version of Language of Fools. So you got a little bit of Peter Gabriel thing going on there with the mask. <laughs> um, and as I said, this was the debut album called Soul Rash. Uh, he's got some different covers on Bandcamp uh, for these. And then there's some other stuff too. But um, this, the one of the instrumentals uh, for um, on the, on the album, the heart wide open redo, there's a song on Soul Rash called heart wide open. And that was the, I, I was going to ask you if that, if that was the case. Yeah. And so there's a, that was actually my introduction to the band. Uh, there, there was a video. I saw a video for it in the late nineties on a, on this channel we had. And I 
just fell in love with the song. I fell in love with the groove. Um, just, I just, just loved the song. And, uh, and so that's on, that's on the, um, uh, that's on the, the soul rash album. So, uh, that was back in 93. So that's where I get, that's where I got that song from originally. Um, anyway. And so that's, and that's the, the kind of the guitar that you hear in that song is kind of how the song flows in the, in the record, but it, it's a very, it just has a really cool little beat. It's got this jangly echoey guitar, um, just a lot of good stuff to it. So I, it's just one of my favorite songs from, from it and the other albums, the rest of the album and, and language of fools, uh, language of fools really kicks off very strong, very, very hard rock and record. So, uh, certainly give them a listen and I'd love to, I'd love to hear what you think of those albums too, but, uh, Anybody else have any any last thoughts that they want to try to get in? It, it makes you it, it made me realize I don't know about you guys, but it made me realize that how many people there must be that have experience in their past with making records knocking around that have the ability to make something really good that we don't even know about because I didn't know about this band and oh. to hear something so accomplished yeah. it, it make it makes you wonder. There's probably a lot of people like that that have records like this in them. And I think it's quite an amazing feat to make a record like that and to not have it sound, you know, dated, like have it not. You might say, oh, this sounds like something that could have come out in the 90s. But you don't go, holy cow, this sounds like rehashed 90s. You know, you don't get I didn't get that impression at all. Mm -hmm. So, right. There's there's, this. I just thought it was pretty remarkable that somebody who I you know that you know who has not been he's been he's been working and putting stuff out but has not really been on the on the radar as far as being popular or, or well known for a very long time could put out something that sounds like a, so professional yeah 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 all right 100% cool grant anything anything uh, else Grinch Rock Warehouse. There you go. Yeah. Like plug, we said plug. before, we did. <laughs> Peter and I had Prescott Niles from the Knack on last night. Uh, Todd and I are doing a Matthew Sweet series. We'll be recording something, I think, next week where we'll be looking at Matthew Sweet's first album, second album. And we're just going to kind of go through the catalog. It's going to take us a year to do it, but we're going to go through the catalog and just kind of review it. Give Matthew Sweet some love. Uh, another thing that's coming up is Obscure Albums. Number two, which since we everyone enjoyed the Obscure Album number one episode, everyone decided we wanted to continue on and do it again. So that'll be coming. And there's something else. And I can't remember what it is, but there's- Oh, whole- there's, there's the one about the, uh, about the bands that, that transitioned in the 80s. Oh, yeah, that's on and some Monday. Who don't. That's coming soon, isn't it? That's Monday. Okay. So I got to get busy on that. Yeah, I think we're going to live stream that dog. Why not? Let's just do it. Um, yeah, so the concept is, or what there are some 70s bands that made the transition to the 80s well, and but there are definitely some bands that didn't handle that transition at all very well so i just wanted to get everybody together and have that topic i don't know if that's been top talked about too much so we're going to talk about that and i know something something else i can't remember there's plenty of more things coming up all right thank you and congratulations john i'm glad you're taking this to the next level and hope we can collaborate some more yeah forward to what else we can do absolutely i appreciate it uh peter you got anything before your while while your internet is still good (laughs) you got anything else you want to throw out there (laughs) nope (laughs) all right Uh, everybody rock daydream nation great channel he has got some great content out there y'all need to just just spend some time with it um i know he's got a lot of good stuff coming up in the in the books um 
I keep hoping he's going to pop on so he can say <laughs> he can say something here. Yeah, am I back? You're back. I got you for now. Yeah. The the, the infected. Oh, that's Grant. it. Yeah. I'm also ranking the damned albums with Martin. Ooh. Oh, oh really? Look at that. He landed Martin Popoff. Look at him. There you go. Mm. Yeah, and we'll be doing the 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 with uh Todd. You're on the the, right? I am. So we'll yep. be recording that pretty soon. So that'll be yep. that will that'll be a great one, I think. I think people will enjoy that one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And um, thank you. Thank you, John, for having me on this oh, channel thanks. on this day. It's been a very challenging <laughs> internet day in Australia. Uh, well, hey, Peter. We had I... a change of government last night. So I think somebody's Maybe done something. Maybe that's it. The that's, that's probably <laughs> it. Yeah, that might be it. But, uh, you know, everybody go check out Peter's uh, Rock Daydream Nation. Go check out uh, Grant's uh, Rock Warehouse. Uh, Ryan's Vinyl Destinations. Uh, Todd, you, we've seen you on Rush Fans. Uh, of course, the Contrarians. Contrarians. Uh, I don't even know who else you've been on. Todd's everywhere. Todd's <laughs> everywhere. He just doesn't have a channel of his own yet, but we'll get him there. Right. <laughs> um, you know, there's so many other channels out there to check out that, that we have, that thanks to the Contrarians, we've all got to be a part of a little bit of. And this has just been a blessing for me to, to talk shop with you guys. So, Thank you all again for uh, being on the show. For those watching, like, share, subscribe to the channel. Go check out some Love Coma. You won't, you won't feel bad about it. It'll do you some good. With that, I'm John Clauser from my little music corner of the world. Peace out.